Hello everyone. Welcome to the brand new section of the course, Accessing GIS Data with QGIS. In this section, we will cover topics such as graphical user interface of QGIS, opening spatial data in QGIS, and GIS data models. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with accessing raster data. In this video, we will distinguish vector data from raster data. The first data type that we will use is raster data. It might be the most familiar to you, as it resembles traditional images. First of all, let's open QGIS. In the browser panel, we can immediately see our downloaded data if we navigate to our working directory. Raster layers have a dedicated icon of a 3 by 3 pixels image, while vector layers have an icon of a concave polygon. If you don't have a browser panel on the screen, you can toggle panels from the View Menus Panels option. If it is displayed, you can dock it anywhere by dragging it out from its current place and placing it in another part of the GUI. We can drag and drop most of the data from the browser panel or, alternatively, use the Add Raster Layer button from the Add Layer toolbar and browse the layer. The browser panel is more convenient for easily recognisable layers as it only lists the files we can open and hides auxiliary files with every kind of metadata. Let's drag one of the SRTM rasters to the canvas or open one with Add Raster Layer. This is a traditional single band raster. It is displayed as a grayscale image with the minimum and maximum values displayed in the Layers panel. You can save your project anytime with the Save and Save As buttons. The resulting file only contains general data about your current work, for example, paths to your open layers, styles and so on from which you can restore it later. As you can see in the preceding screenshot, there is a regular grid with cells painted differently, just like an image. However, based on the maximum value of the data, its colours aren't hard-coded into the file, like in an image. Furthermore, it has only a single band, not three or four bands for RGBA. Let's examine the raster more carefully by zooming in until we can see individual cells. We can also query them for their values with the Identity Features tool by clicking on a cell. As you can see, we get a number for every cell which can be quite out of the range of 0 to 255 representing colour codes. These numbers seem arbitrary, and indeed, they are arbitrary. They usually represent some kind of real-world phenomenon, like in our case, the elevation from the mean sea level in metres. Further, we move on to raster data model. Here, we discuss the basic properties of the raster data model. Raster data are regular grids, matrices, made up from individual cells. The values are only limited by the type of the storage. They can be in the range of bytes, 8-bit integers, 16-bit integers, floating point numbers and so on. Rasters are always rectangular, like an image. Another useful property of raster data is that their coverage is continuous, while their data can change. They cover their entire extent with coincident cells. If we need a full and continuous coverage, Raster is an obvious choice. There are two implications from this property. First is, the accuracy of a raster is not constant. It covers uniform areas in a given projection. Therefore, on the globe, the area covered by a single raster inherits the distortion of the projection. Secondly, if we increase the resolution, the size of the raster data shows a quadratic growth as we have to increase the number of cells in each dimension. The last important property of a raster layer is its origin. As raster data behaves as two-dimensional matrices, it can be spatially referenced with only a pair of coordinates. These coordinates, unlike in graphics, are the lower left ones of the data. Let's see what QGIS can tell us about our raster layer. We can see its metadata by right-clicking on it in the Layers panel, choosing Properties, and clicking on the Metadata tab. As you can see, our raster layer has a number of rows and columns, one band, an origin, a resolution, pixel size, a no data value, and a data type. There are 3D rasters called voxels, which can be analysed in their volume or cut to slices, visualised in a hole, in slices, or as ISO surfaces for various values. 
Furthermore, cells don't have to be squares. It is common practice to have different resolutions in different dimensions. Rasters with rectangular cells are supported by QGIS and many other open source GIS clients. The distortions caused by four-sided raster cells can be minimized with hexagons, regular shapes with the most sides capable of a complete coverage, as you can see in this diagram. Rasters can have multiple bands, and we can even combine them to create RGB visualizations. In this video, we have accessed raster data 